Okay. So, um, smoothing groups. What a smoothing group is, and the easiest way to explain it, is that I'm going to tell a polygon to have a number. Any polygons next to that number, any polygons next to it, if they share the same number, the computer tries to make it look like one soft, complete surface. The best way to think of this is if I come into uh, a box like this, and get my layer set up here real quick. I'm just going to do it here, and then do box. If I look at this box, and again change it to a darker color so you can see it better. Okay. If I look at this box and I turn off my wireframe, you can see that it's got a sharp edge between each of these surf these uh, corners. 90 degree angle, easy to understand that. Um, but if I collapse this down the editable poly, so I can see what it can do, I can go to the four to the poly mode. And as soon as I go to four, there's this thing called polygon smoothing groups that pop up, and usually I have that above it right there and then polygon IDs which we'll get to when we get to texturing but what it does is actually let me get rid of one of these edges here real quick and just control backspace to get rid of it again all right back to here if you look at this polygon smoothing group it's got this number four selected okay so it's number four if I click up here it's number three if I click over here it's number five if I click down here, it's number two. So none of the ones touching this, this surface, in fact, I guess back here, it's number seven. So none of these um, polygons touching this surface have the same smoothing group number. That's just the way we label them. It doesn't mean that they stay that way, and obviously when we start modifying stuff, they're gonna reset and you have to do it by hand. So this is like the last thing you do. It's one of the reasons we didn't do it yet. But if I come over here and say this is a four, I'm gonna change this one. I'm going to turn this off too. F2 is the way to turn this on and off so you can see it's shaded or not. And if I turn this to a 4, turn off 1, and go to 4, it now no longer has an edge right there. It looks like it's faking it. It's still really there. All right, there's still a polygon right or an edge right there. But the computer is trying to tell us or trying to fool us into thinking this is a smooth surface. That's why it's called smoothing groups. This is the smooth surface between these edges. So if you want to get an idea what that is, when we have really polygonal characters like Laura Croft or like Crash Bandicoot, the old school ones on the PS2 or whatever, they didn't have polygonal faces because they had smoothing groups across the surface. So that means they were matching where they needed to. So um, if we come to here and I look at, there's another example I can show you is, um, let's do a sphere. When you make a sphere, and I'm gonna change this to we can still see all the polygons, but if we looked at it um, in here by adding an edible poly, which I don't use very often, it's good for examples, you can see that this is a one and this is a one. In fact, everything is set to one smoothing group. So everything on this object is looked at as continuous, not as an edge at an angle. Okay, so the computer now can make things look smooth without actually having all the polygons to make them look smooth, okay? For example, when you when we looked at the stuff in ZBrush, ZBrush actually has no smoothing groups. There's no way to smooth it by making one polygon the same um, smooth area as the one next to it. The reason it looks so smooth is because we have so many subdivisions, okay? If we have more subdivisions, it's gonna look smooth. So. Um, the other thing you can do with this, I'll turn this one off here, is that when you build a polygon, you can say generate um, smooth. You can push the smooth button. If you don't have the smooth button on, it's always on by default for spheres. But if you don't have it on, it goes all this. So you can actually see each face as it's drawn. Okay? Now I can put that edible poly or turn it to an edible poly again, grab these faces and do a one, and it'll go back to like it was smooth when I made it. But it's totally um, hacking it after the fact. So if we take this off and I delete it and we come back to here, what's going on with this? Because if I turn off the editable symmetry and I take a look here, it's now completely nice and sharp edge. But really, this doesn't have a sharp edge and that's because the smoothing groups are the same. So watch. If I come up to here, go to polygon and go to this polygon mode and grab this one, 
put this back on so it's easier to see, you can see it's set to seven. If I grab this one, it's also set to seven. So that means it's, the computer's telling it that it's a smooth surface from here to here. And I actually, if we just, I can't think of a new shortcut was that is. Um, if we select this whole thing, it's all set to seven. Really what we want is the lower half to be a different number than the upper half, okay? Because we don't want it to be um, rounded at this point. We want it to have a sharp edge. So we can do, let me see something. We can do another number. If I pick four though, for example, if I pick four by example, um, though, turn off seven. The way you have to work in polygon or with smoothing groups is you have to click on the one you don't want it to be. It just won't switch because you can have multiple smoothing groups on one object, which is further down the line. But, um, and if I go to four, now this is going to have a sharp edge between the two polygons, but now suddenly this doesn't. And that's because this is a four. So I don't want that to be a four. So let me undo that. And I'll change it to something like eight and now I have an edge between these two faces right here and an edge between all the faces on here this is set to four this is set to seven and this is set to eight why is it those numbers it's just the numbers that that were originally set to it I could do it over again and make my life easy and I suggest you do that sometimes you just grab everything and say clear all and then come back to actually clear all will work too because that means they're all different but that also means that this one and this one and this one, none of them have any smoothing groups on them. So what I would do is clear all, come to uh, this option right here where it says by angle, because in Max you can select things by angle. You can say, I only want to select things that are 45 degrees or 20 degrees off of the polygons next to it. Once it hits something that's more than however many degrees you define, I don't want um, you to select that. So it makes it really convenient. If I turn this on, well, 45, it's gonna grab a bunch of it. We don't want that. So usually what I do is I set this to like 15. 15. And then if I click here, it's only selecting this front face. Made my life super easy, super clean. So I can just come here and say, this is gonna be my number one now. And I can come over here and it's only gonna select that one. I don't even have to do double click. I don't have to select a bunch of them. I can just say, select that whole section that's 15 degrees in order and then I can say that one's gonna be two and then obviously this one um, and it looks like it thinks this is a little bit more than 15 so if I push control and keep clicking I can grab the rest of them and it's not perfect but it's faster in most cases I could also just change this to 20 or something but in this case it was just faster um, and I'll change this to three so now we have three different smoothing groups one two and three okay or I'm sorry, one two and three so they're all set so perfect now what happens? How do we get it to be that way? Um, well, let's go put the symmetry on. So if we put symmetry on and I say um, X and say flip, we'll just start with Y and X too. Suddenly, it still got it here and it still has it here, but this edge right here, where it should be the sharpest point because it's even more than 45 degree angle, even more than 15 degrees, um, it's smooth. The edges on the symmetry are going to use the same thing because they're just duplicating it. So to get this to have sharp edges, we can't do that until we're done modifying the sword and add all the information of the geometry. Then after you do that, you can either put an edible poly above it if you really want to, or you can just collapse it down. I'm old school. This is the way I've done it for years, so I'm just going to keep doing it that way. So I just right-clicked and collapsed it. So now we're back to edible poly. So I can come here. And I can do that by 15 degrees again. And I can look at this and it's set to three. Both sides are set to three, all the way around is set to three. So I'm gonna click here and see if it does grab what I want, which it did. So I'm gonna grab this one and this one and this one. Okay, and now I'm gonna change that from three to, I mean, I guess I should do the other side and keep that one three so it's the first one. Oops this one and this one and I don't want to use two or three because that means it'll start not working up here so I'm gonna use I'm gonna turn off three so I click it and it's not three. Oh, okay, cool that happened okay so the other thing that happened when I was just doing that is it clicked through okay since it's not set to not click through the object sometimes you're gonna click the back face okay how do you fix it 
you can just say, and this is new button they put here, optional calling, you can just say back face call, which means that no matter what, it will only select things I can see. Okay, so if I alt and click this, it'll go away. Now I won't have to if I do this again. It won't select it because it can't see through. It's not going to select the inside face like it just did a moment ago. And now I can change. Yeah, yeah. And that now I'm going to change. Turn off three on this one and change it to four. Okay. And now I've got an edge on that part of the blade. And it looks like I messed this one up, so we're going to come back to here and turn off three. There we go. So now I've got this edge, this edge, and this edge. Now I come back up to this one, and this was two. So we're going to get rid of two, and we're going to go to five. Okay, so and it looks like I grabbed this one too by accident. So that's good, because I'm going to show you something anyway. So a lot of people forget that since you did it on the mirror here, if I don't get this one is different than this one, I get no sharp edge between the two. And it may be that they're 15 degrees. Yeah, it's just it's more than 15 degrees. So what I do in this case is then I turn off my by angle and I hold the Alt button down and drag a box around this. So I'm not selecting that anymore. I'm only selecting this one piece. Basically, I'm separating all these pieces out and giving them their own smoothing group. So now I've got a blade that goes that way and that way. I still have weirdness up here because the first one we made with the symmetry across the middle doesn't do it. So I mean, I can just click with my hand here real quick because we know that 15 degrees will make a graph whole thing. So I'll grab it by hand, turn off the two, and go to seven. Okay, let's get there. And now I just have this last one right here. The other thing I'm going to tell you, the thing that you'll notice after I finish this one, this should be eight, is that Q makes it so I don't move anything by accident. But once I select this one and I change it from three to eight, I should have all my edges showing up as separate cuts. But if you remember, one thing I didn't do is change this one and this one. And if you look, they're both still set to one, okay? So that's where the, the thing comes in, makes it a little bit more efficient for us. If your polygons aren't touching another polygon that you wanna use the same number on, they won't, they, it'll work. As long as they're not touching a polygon that has the same number, it will um, not, it'll show it as one edge. So in other words, this and the front and the back side of the sword can both be set to one because it doesn't matter. They never touch anywhere because I have the edges defining their touching sides. Okay, it makes it a little bit more efficient to use because there's only one um, smoothing group for both the front and the back. If I symmetry this again, it's going to erase all my smoothing groups I just made. Okay. So the smoothing groups is like the last thing you're going to do. And there's sometimes we don't even do it anymore. And we'll talk about that when we get to texture maps because we can control it that way. But right now, the only time you want to do the smoothing groups and make it look like a sharp sword is at the end of the modeling phase. After you've done with all the models, then you mess with the smoothing groups. So because if I need to go back in and symmetry it or anything like that, it's going to erase the smoothing groups. And not that it's a lot of work, but just realize that as soon as you re-symmetry it, the smoothing groups are gone.